I'll share. Okay, we should be live now. Checking yep. on it. You're live. Are we live? Yep. What's the title? What does the title say? Oh, let me, let me, I wanted to find out if we were live on our. Okay, so I need to edit this then. We should be live <coughs> on That's YouTube. Good. Thank you. We should be live on That's YouTube. Good. Thank you. We should be live <coughs> on That's YouTube. Good. Thank you. We should be live on YouTube. So look you. at all my masks while he's waiting. Oh no, but we're live. That's right. Good. Uh, nobody can see you. We should be live on YouTube. So look you. at all my masks while he's waiting. Oh no, but we're live. Oh no, no, right. you're not. Uh, uh, nobody can see you. We should be live on YouTube. So look you. at all my masks while he's waiting. Oh no, but we're live. Oh, no, I can no, see you. Not, uh, uh, nobody yeah, can see you. You should be live. <coughs> That's good. Look at all my masks while he's waiting. Oh, no, but we're live. Oh, no, I can no, see you. Not, uh, uh, nobody yeah, can see you. You should be live. That's good. Look at all my masks while he's waiting. Oh, no, but we're live. I can see you. Oh, no, but we're live. Thank you. 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 Uh, nobody yeah, can see you. You should be live. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Look at all my masks while he's waiting. Oh, no, but we're not. I can see you. Uh, nobody yeah, can see you. You should be live. That's good. Look at all my masks while he's waiting. Oh, no, but we're not. I can see you. Thank 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 you. Thank
Welcome to this very special digital presentation by Hispanic Lifestyle, Latina Conference 2020, Connecting Latinas of Influence. We are proud to have the sponsored support of Wells Fargo Bank, Riverside County Economic Development Agency, Coca-Cola, the Small Business Development Corporation of Orange County, Inland Empire Health Plan, and Goya Foods. Our program and the complete listing of Hispanic Lifestyles 2020 Latinas of Influence can be found on our website, HispanicLifestyle.com. When you post on social media, please use the hashtag Latina Conference 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of Hispanic Lifestyle, Richard Sandoval. Well, welcome back, everybody. I'm Richard Sandoval. As that video by Anna Vergara said, she's, uh, I really appreciate all her efforts. She is a past Latina of influence who year after year lends her voice to um, our Latina conference. Um, if you're watching this, uh, you have a couple of options. One of them is Facebook. Uh, go ahead and uh, watch the stream there. You can send us messages. Also, you can watch us on hispaniclifestyle.com. We have a live stream in, in two sections, so feel free to watch us there. And um, also, send us a note, send us an email. This section is meant to network and talk a little bit about our vendors and catch up with some of our past and current Latinas of influence. So I'm gonna get right into this and course I had everything set up and we ladies are live I are we, were you able to hear me ladies can you hear me you can hear you yes. hear you sounds great if, if you would um, hey let's do a little self introduction real quick Denise start with you hi it's good to see you again Richard uh, as I said what a difference a year makes um, I'm Denise Navarro president and CEO of logical innovations based out of Houston Texas but uh, we are all over the country our main customer is NASA and I was uh, one of the I was honored as one of uh, 2019 Latinas of influence so thank you very much and um, I'm so glad to that you did this virtually so that uh, others could experience this as well. And I hope next year we get to be together in person. Well, you're you're in uh, Texas, right? That's yes. that's where you are. Okay. Houston, yes. Houston. And uh, Sandy Lou, if you would. She, Hello. Look, 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 we have a 2019, and we'll transition to a 2020 Latina of influence. Hello, everyone. I am Sandy Lou Guerrero. I am a transformational business and life coach. I'm. Um, I'm the owner of Life Trace Coaching and Life Warrior Productions. I'm also the creator, producer, director of Transform Your Life with Sandy Lou and Friends Facebook uh, live show. Uh, and uh, I'm also a best-selling author and um, influencer. And uh, it's definitely an honor to be here and to be honored this year among such amazing powerhouse Latina women. Thank you for this opportunity. And my friend and colleague, Jenny Marie, please. Hi, welcome back, everybody. And thank you all for participating. Um, my name is Jenny Marie Ramirez, and I am uh, owner and founder of Little Bit of This or That Homemade Doggy Treat. So I'm a baker, a farmer, an Indian chief. No, <laughs> do a little bit of everything. But I also work uh, with Richard for many years, and I love all the experiences that we've had. So congratulations to all the ladies and everyone um, well-deserved. And we are very uh, proud of all of you. Well, thank you. Uh, I, I don't want to forget to thank our sponsors. That's a pretty uh -huh. fan. Thank you, Coke, for continuing to actually standing by us, if you will. Um, if, if, 
everyone doesn't mind. I, I really want to talk about the time we're living in COVID-19 and how we got to this point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, if you were um, dedicated enough to start at the beginning, I, I spoke about how I started this journey back in October asking for nominations for our Latinas of Influence. Uh, we were all ready to do our event back in April, and then uh, the uh, directive came down from the governor of the state of California. Um, one of our colleagues had actually canceled their event the day before. And so that's when I, you know, had the realization that it wasn't going to happen. Our event was not going to happen in person. We rescheduled uh, and then regrouped to doing what we do now. And, and thank goodness for... Uh, technology that we're able to do this and you know Denise you were there last year and I just I get a lot of enjoyment because I'm one of the few people that get to interview and talk to each one of the Latinas of influence but sharing your story there in that room and the networking that does comes afterwards if you would talk a little bit about that Denise yes uh, it was a very uh, powerful moment uh, to be there, and and that's why uh, that's why I said I hope we're back together next year because just just the ladies interacting with one another, us getting to know each other, we all come from very different backgrounds and experiences. So just having the the opportunities to network and talk to one another um, was certainly enjoyable, and and I, and I made some friends along the way. And plus the vendors that are there with the opportunity to market their products and to pass out business cards and and, and make um, you know make connections. Um, you just you just can't beat that. And so um, so I, I I was glad to see that you know we were able to continue in some capacity. But I do look forward to having the the interaction, the networking, and the face to face experiences that that this program provided. And Sandy Lou, you've not only spoken at the event, you've sang at the event, and you know, I, and you're one of the people I really feel, I really feel for because you know this is uh, being at that event is, it's just a great experience. I, I know I keep saying that over and over because I've been doing it since almost the year 2000. I was a little boy then. I was young. I had hair. Well, you know, let me share something really quickly, uh, Richard. I, you know, um, so in 2016, uh, January 2016, I quit my full time job. I got sick and tired of being sick and tired of what was going on and then just the type of leadership that I was under. And I decided I'm going to go full on coaching. I've been coaching already for years as a part time thing, as a hobby, you know, this for a long time. But um, February, I really jumped into, you know, marketing, getting out there, networking, and your event was like the following month. And I had never heard of Hispanic lifestyle. I had never heard of all these network opportunities and other powerhouse Latinas, Latinos, and that I can actually relate to that or, or that are going to be my inspiration or my mentors or people that that are the um, proof to me that it's that succeeding is possible, that being a Latina didn't mean that everything was going to be a hurdle, that if they accomplished it, I could accomplish it. So I remember being at my first event that year with you um, and just being completely mesmerized and completely inspired and thinking like, oh my gosh, well, I was stuck at a nine to five, um, not going anywhere, unfortunately, because my leadership was just not supportive in that way. And, you know, many other things, but, and all this stuff is happening and I miss, and I've been missing out. And then I just thought, you know, um, how many other people don't know uh, what's available to them or don't have those influential people. And I know that that was me. And that's also one of the reasons why I got into coaching. And that is one of the reasons that I also uh, felt that doing my Facebook live show was so important because I wanted to bring to uh, our community or just to others in general, what's possible. And so in my show, I share stories and have people um, share their stories of, res of, 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 you know, breakdown, struggle and resilience <clears throat> and share tools that empower and inspire people. But your event, Latina, uh, uh, the Hispanic Lifestyle Latina Conference was really a big, big part of um, expanding the vision 
and just really uh, a motivator for me. So it's been definitely a privilege to to facilitate one of your workshops in your event, uh, to be the MC and, and host for part of your event one year, and then even just to call the door prizes. And uh, it's just been an honor to be part of that space and creating that space because I see that who we are and what we do is bigger than us. And it's a, it's a responsibility. And more than ever right now, we really get to step into those shoes. Well, again, yeah. I want to thank you for all of that. Um... I, I know uh, we can keep this secret amongst us four, so nobody's going to know this, but you know, one of the things I admire about all of you in this room and all the other Latinas of influence actually too, is we have somebody else joining us in a second, but the way it we just do it, um, no plug out to Nike because they're not sponsoring the event, but you know, success or fail, just the chance, the opportunity to do something. Um, I, and I'm, I'm trying to be very humble about this, but yes, I have a certain skill set. But the crazy part about it, I haven't done this. You know, doing a live event has a lot of components. And uh, Sandy Lou, you scared the hell out of me last week when you told me all the components that would actually be involved. But forget that for now. We'll talk more about that. Janie Marie, talk to me. Talk to me a little bit about what you're going through and share with our friends. I'll get to you, all, Yvonne, in a minute. Yeah. Well, uh, for me, you know, this COVID time has been a challenge. I'm caregiving for my mom and dad are both on hospice and trying to um, still keep my business afloat. Um, by contacting and I do have those customers that are uh, have been loyal customers for many years because I've been at this with my dog business for about 10 years and um, so shifting you know shifting the mindset from giving pills to baking the bacon and doing the dough and then cutting the grass and then you know all of these different responsibilities that I have right now so um, I'm blessed. My customers are are loyal, and they are wanting their dog treats. And I got three orders already from just being here, you know. So, um, but it's my passion. I love that. I love working with you. I love the piece that you know that's out there for everyone to grab. Everyone that is is um, open to sharing and and promoting. Um, businesses so i think if we put ourselves around the right circles and um and also pay it back you know when you get business you give business and um and i love it i i, I it's it's a lot of work but i am uh i'm a survivor and i'm perseverance and come from some good stock from my mama and my daddy and and so i'm pushing Pushing along. Pushing along. Yvonne, if you would um, join the conversation. We're just basically getting to know each other and sharing our stories. But congratulations on being a uh, uh, 2020 Latina of influence. And you owe me a picture, you. Yvonne. You owe me. I do. I owe, I'll okay, send, take you. that picture. Okay. Yes. Nice to meet everyone. Nice Tell meet. everybody a little bit about your story about the uh, being in Santa Ana and then uh, <laughs> and then the gallery and, and so I am a real estate broker, property manager, notary public, and um, originally in my I, I live in downtown Santa Ana in a live work loft space. And originally we opened up here as a gallery. Um, I, I saw all of the artists getting pushed out of the other galleries that were closing their doors to them, uh, charging too much money. And um, I decided that we could do something about that. So we offered our space to artists for free for three and a half years. And we hosted local artists and art shows, uh, book signings, concerts, um, 
all, all kinds of crochet workshops. Uh, every month it changed for three and a half years. And um, I, I feel really, really uh, lucky to have met some of these artists uh, because they're all doing tremendous work. Um, from that, it, that led me into community engagement. That's a board that I've been on for the past three years. And um, most recently, we were able to give away $50,000 at in a $100, 100 a grant and the amount of $500 each uh, to local artists work to help them through COVID-19. And we just recently gave away four more this week as well. Um, so I feel really lucky that something that was a passion project for me as far as Gallery 211 turned into becoming a board member to where I can actually help other artists in a different capacity. Um, so I feel really lucky that it, it transcended into that. And now um, the background that you see is my office where the gallery once was. So you can see some of the art up there as well. Um, so now it's a property management, a live scan fingerprinting. I do mobile notary public out of here as well and residential sales. So quite a bit. Right. Would you say five hundred thousand? That's like pocket change to Denise. Hey, uh, how, uh, fifty thousand. Oh, fifty thousand. Uh -huh. That falls. <laughs> that's change that falls out of her pocket. Denise, talk <laughs> a little bit about uh, NASA. Hey, we're going to the um, is NASA, and we uh, just sent somebody to the moon. The the is is that impacted your business? Is that helping out your business, Denise? It's awesome. So we just, so we had the first um, astronauts leave American soil in almost 10 years um, in, in May. So that was, that was just amazing. Um, and, you know, this COVID-19, this pandemic where the world or around us is shutting down and, you know, everything put on hold and, and so much going on. I have to say, we we're very blessed that with a customer like NASA, we've been able just to continue. Um, everyone has gone to telework mode. So I've got folks all over the country working from their homes um, and haven't missed a beat. And so it's it's really spectacular that we're part of this great, this great country and this great agency of NASA that the work continues and exploration is going to continue. So right now we're, you know, we, we've got our, we've, we've made it off soil for, on a SpaceX rocket. Uh, uh, so from from our from our you know from Cape Canaveral from Kennedy Space Center in Florida so that and you know the last one was in 2011 so we've we've made that milestone and so the next stop is the moon and then on to Mars wow. so it's exciting times now uh, Sandy Liu are you planning to do any space travel are you are you, are you up to going to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> you mentally go out in space sometimes, but no, I plan to stay physically here and land. <laughs> physically here. Um, I'm waiting for a couple of other people to join us, but um, you know, one of the th things I wanted to share uh, with everyone about producing this year's <clears throat> event is the stories. Um, there, I don't know if it was a little somber tone, of course, given the times that we're at, but I think I mentioned again earlier about pivoting, pivoting how you do business, how you operate. Um, Yvonne, I want to throw that back to you. Um, I know that you and I had a conversation about some of these protests were right out in front of your office, which actually is part of your home as well, too, right? Yes. Yes, so um, we did. Uh, so the protests uh, were uh, actually on one block and then a couple of hours later they were at, at the opposite end of the other block. And by the end of the night, uh, we had looters out in front of our property as well. Um, so the background that you see is my office and you can see four, almost four windows right there. Uh, so my family, six of us, we had to stand outside of our property to protect it. So yeah, we had a pivot. We <laughs> we never thought we would find ourselves uh, standing guard to protect our business, our home. And there we were. And uh, we had about 100, maybe 150 looters come because they were being flushed by the, by the police department and the sheriffs and SWAT, SWAT team. And um, 
it all just happened in front of our windows and um, in front of our front door. So uh, we've definitely changed by hiring security guard during the protests uh, because they were not all, you know, manageable at some point. Um, they're now a lot more peaceful, but uh, we went from hiring an unarmed security guard to an armed security guard. And um, we also had to really quickly find ways to communicate with the rest of the business owners and the rest of the residences so that we knew who was home, who was boarded up, who had um, security measures in place or didn't have in place because um, there's not a lot of us here. So, you know, if uh, if half of us had left, that less left us pretty much, you know, standing by ourselves. So, well, speaking yeah. of standing by yourself, um, I <laughs> were joined by an original <laughs> Latina of influence from our uh, original class of 2013, Gina Lynn Espinoza, who's been rocking and rolling as well, too. Gina, how are you? And tell me about your latest adventures. Oh, my God, Richard. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, joining you from just north of Mexico City. So um, where we landed here um, some time ago, um, I was complimenting Richard earlier on the success of today because I have gone to every single conference since the original conference. That's great. That, yes, except for when I wait global. So <laughs> I've been traveling and uh, globe trotting for now four, almost five years. <clears throat> so I haven't been able to be at the conference in person. And this was like such a huge treat for me today. I was like literally crying, like, oh my God, I get to see everyone. And, and um, this is, and I've told Richard this before, I've received a few awards through the years for work that I do, but my most coveted award of all is this award. Um, Richard has got to be the most genuine person I've ever met. And his, um, his, the way he does this conference, it's all about us. It's about the Latinas. It's not about anyone else. And it's about getting our names out there to the rest of the world. And um, so that we can be an influence to others. Um, I just had a call last night with a Latina who's in uh, Pennsylvania and she's thinking about going global as well. So I've been <laughs> coaching people on how to leave and become global and doesn't even look like I'm gone. I know that I participate a lot in different things still in, 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 in the LA area. But um, like Sandy Lou was saying earlier, I too had a health issue that happened and it made me really think about um, who I was, where I was going and how I was going to live the rest of my life. So um I was diagnosed with the disease of the central nervous system and I really haven't come public about it really until now. And it's your life comes to a grinding halt and you really think about your food for one thing and uh, your exercise and taking care of your body. And although I thought I was doing a pretty good job, I could have been better. So leaving the U S and unfortunately, um, I, I think of the, the U.S. like a food desert now because when you walk into a grocery store, <clears throat> you know, the real food is only around the corners, on the edges, and everything else in the middle is in a box. So, if you, <laughs> so you didn't think about it too. I went to Europe, and it's completely different on how you buy food there. So anyway, long story short, I've had a, a big awakening, and um, – I am thankful to say that I'm doing really well. I There was a time when I couldn't actually walk um, for many, many weeks. And I am now walking and running and playing like I used to. <laughs> so so this adventure has has been an adventure of travel, but it's also been an adventure of, of a living an examined life because I too am a life coach and motivational speaker. And you get caught up sometimes and you, you realize you have to walk your own talk. But how deep is the talk? So my talk is very deep now because I have experienced so many different things. And so when I have talked to my clients now, it's really about healing, 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 healing. So you got to heal all those guilt, all that stuff. And as Latinas, we carry a lot of guilt. <laughs> 
frankly. <laughs> and we carry ancestral guilt. And uh, because our grandmothers talk to us about different things and tell us about our family. And, and I'm grateful for my grandparents who brought us here in 1910 uh, to flee bloodshed of the revolution. But also it's a lot to, it's a lot to, to it's a big cross to bear. So my adventures are huge. Um, they're fun. They're always something to be learned by an adventure. And, and um, so anyway, I'm just so happy to be here. I can't tell you. Can you tell? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> we've got some other people joining in, in a second here. But I'm, I'm curious about this. Um, <laughs> Gina Lynn, you just shared with us something very personal. And I don't know what it is about our Latina conference, but the most intimate details of people's personal lives are shared at this conference. And, and Jenny Marie can attest to this. I mean, it, it, to me, it's always amazing. I don't know if it's standing in front of a group of women, hoping to connect with them and share with them some tidbit of advice but um jenny marie mm -hmm. briefly talk a little bit about you you've been the, in that room where like whoa yeah. where did that come from yeah <laughs> i think it's trust you know i think we we uh, we all have that equal thread of life and we um we've been through something we've been through um a tragedy or love or We've got familia. We we all have something in common, and it's easy to open up. And um, there's the 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 walls are gone. You know, I think at the Latina conference for me, it's there isn't a barrier there. The barriers are within ourselves. And so once we open up and just allow all this newness to come in, and all these new relationships, and all the new people that you meet that come through, um, it's it's, it's refreshing. Everybody's happy. They're glad to be there. It's a new opportunity for somebody else to get something back. And there's always a takeaway. Someone always leaves with something more than what they came with. Thank you. Um, Teresa, Teresa Razo, can we throw it to you? I, I know your screen's blank. She was there. Oh, she was there. Sandy Lou, your thoughts. Um, I mean, you, for instance, you, your video, the intimate details of your life that you share with and, and, uh, my, my wife said, well, why did you take that soundbite, if you will, from Sandy you know, I thought, I thought, oh my gosh, is that the only, only thing people are going to hear in my victim story? No, uh, <laughs> no, but when, when, when you have the, your panel, uh, that you because we did two videos. I did the introduction and the other. I, I, I heard you get to explain more of the details of your life, but my wife did, you know, she pointed that out. And but I thought, a little, little context to it, I really felt like, wow, that hit you in the face. You're listening to all these stories, and this story hit you in the face. Well, I, I just want to say that, um, that. I think one of the reasons that we find ourselves in an open space or vulnerable space or open to be vulnerable in the conference in particular is because of the fact that we are around people that are also doing it, that are putting themselves out there, that are taking the risk. Uh, and, and, and every breakdown is a breakthrough and the challenge is a lesson. And because we learn it, then we want to be able to support other people and motivate other people in, in sharing these lessons and these struggles and this the fact that we were able to rise above it, um, you know, learning how to take those obstacles and turning them into opportunities. Like Teresa's doing a phenomenal job at that at, at her restaurants, um, and and just and just you know everything that's going on right now is like looking at how we can turn these lemons into some delicious lemon lemonade, lemon cheesecake, lemon pie, you name it, a uh, lemon margarita, you know. <laughs> But, but the fact that we are around are people that get it, right? Because not everybody gets it, right? Uh, if you've seen the movie Self Made, I don't know if you've seen it, but I highly recommend it, especially if you're an entrepreneur or visionary, someone that 
that wants to be inspired. Um, this woman, nobody understood what she was up to. They didn't get it, but she knew. She knew her vision. She knew her goal. She knew her target. And it was never reasonable. And the obstacles were stacked up against her. But no matter what, she knew what she wanted. And she, she saw the possibility that nobody else saw. And I think in, the, in, this, uh, in this arena, I want to call it, uh, we see that for each other. And we, we are standing together in, in our challenges and our triumphs and our, in our resilience and our courage. And, and I think that's one of the beautiful things about your, um, this particular event. Well, thank you. And speaking of being hungry, I, I, I cannot tell you how hungry I am for some empanadas. And, uh, <laughs> uh, Teresa, how are you? And congratulations. Part of thank the- you. Thank you. We're, we're very blessed, very grateful. Thank you. I've been all morning listening to the panels and watching the videos and stuff. And, you know, it's, um, it's a great conference. It's, it was a great inspiration to hear the stories and, and everything. And I feel just very honored and grateful to be part of the such amazing group of uh, amazing women. Well, oh. you're, you're part of the Orange County connection here. Two, th- two things that I want to point out about the list I haven't <laughs> talked about. Uh, number yes. one, how many Latinas from Orange County uh, ended up on the list? That, that was kind of a first. And uh, uh, four lawyers, attorneys. And, uh-huh. and, and get this. Wow. This is a stat I did not know. Mm-hmm. Only almost 1%, less than 1%, of the lawyers in the United States are Latinas. I had, wow. I guess number one, I'd never really thought about it, but number two, that's a pretty darn lot. Yeah, you have to do better. So. Well, I wanted to become an attorney, but I guess I moved careers somewhere, somehow. <laughs> so. Well, thank God you did. Otherwise, you know. <laughs> You know, you you just you you briefly uh, touched on something, but talk a little bit about your um, activities relative to starting a um, the association. You know, you pivoted and you made things happen as far as your restaurant. Will you share with us the uh, a little bit of that story on on how you dealt with COVID nineteen and owning two yes. restaurants? Yes. Um... God, well, COVID-19 really hit some of, uh, it hit everybody, but it hit um, big time such um, industries like ours, which uh, two restaurants um, going very well. And then suddenly you have COVID-19 that you can only do takeout, you're limited, you have to let go of some of your staff. Um, I just, you know, it was very overwhelming. I would think of every other factor that would kind of interrupt the business but never thought of a pandemic um and somebody you know it just came to us so quick so fast that we're like okay instead of asking what do we do um i said what are the needs of the people out there what are the needs of the community you know um we've always been focused on that so this would not be the exception so okay so what are we going to do so we turned around, we did takeout, but not only that, then we also, we have the fortunate that Villa Roma already has a market and deli component to the restaurant. So we just pivoted even greater there. Um, and it was really hard. It was it was hard times, sales, um, especially at one of my places, sales were down almost 90%. And for that was, it was a big hit and um, very uncertain where the business was going to go. And that night we just went home and I told Leo, you know what? He looked at me, he goes, what are we going to do? And I said, what we're going to do, we're just going to keep doing what we do best. And what we do best is open our doors for the community, cook for, you know, not only to satisfy um, the palate, but also to satisfy the soul. So we're going to do that regardless of where the businesses end or whether we have to shut down the doors, but we're going to do it the right way. And we continued doing that. We continued uh, feeding some families in need. I have no idea how how we did it. I just know it's it's God behind it. Um, it's God's um, 
journey and that I'm only just following and being um, an instrument of his journey because um, there's no explanations. Even if you look at the math, there, it doesn't make sense. There's there's no numbers to to figure this out. So um, unbelievable. Um, Cambalache is dedicated to help families in need in youth shelters. Villa Roma is for homeless shelters. And we started with a few families. Now it's like 10 families a week um, and youth shelter every week. And then for the homeless shelters, uh, we started with about 50 meals a day, then 100, then 200. And now we are um, up to 1,400 meals a day that Leo is cooking. A day, Jeez. every single day. He's working harder now. God, I swear, yes. you cracked the biggest whip. Um, yeah, he, he's working a lot harder right now. But you know what? With the, his heart is full. His heart is full. He's never been so happy to cook for so many people than for these um, families in need and vulnerable people out there. Sylvia, where are you going? I was just going to throw it to you. Here. Okay. Oh, she's oh she's right there. I didn't see her. She's right there. There you go, <laughs> Sylvia. Well, again, yeah. Sylvia, a 2020 Latina of influence. Sylvia, how are you? And uh, congratulations, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for giving us this platform, and I hope I could be more cheerful, <laughs> but I'm not. I don't know how to serve my clients my people because not having my magazine printed is like i lost my my you know identity so i am constantly trying to meet people to talk to know what is what i can do even when francis uh, you know put our great chef leo people would say where is the magazine we want to tag <laughs> it you send you know by email but we want to have it at home. So hopefully next month, not July, but August, we are planning to have the magazine printed and probably I'm going to be back to be in life <laughs> because I lost my, I lost, I lost everything I had, you know? I, I feel very powerless, not bringing what I always did with so much, you know, love and, and happiness. So this has been a very, very incredible uh, break. And although we have the time to think and redo many things, the final, you know, product is not still there. And I need to, to feel happier when, when that can happen. Great. Gina, I'm, I'm watching you. I'm getting dizzy watching you. I was hoping you didn't fall. Um, Better for your friend. And it, yeah, I'm, 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 throw, I'm throwing this around. Does and, and somebody else want to add to the conversation? Thoughts? I, I think right now it's really testing times and, and uh, it feels like we're coming out of it, but there's still a lot of uncertainty because we don't know with the pandemic what's going to happen. We're, we're hearing a lot of different uh, information coming from all kinds of places that that you know that the, there's a rise again and things like that so i think it's really important for us to look at um uh, our our pandemic strategy our, our 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 emergency strategy just because at this point now we know if it happened now we don't know when it'll happen again whether we we uh don't end up in quarantine again and we don't get in lockdown and all these businesses have to close again uh you never know what's going to happen one year down the road, five years down the road, 10 years down the road. So it's really mm -hmm. important to like really take the moment to start creating the structure and the steps that are gonna help you. Like for example, uh, I know you're struggling with your magazine, but right now a lot of people are already going virtual. So maybe now it's the time, it's like, how do I create the website? How do I make it virtual? Uh, who is already doing it? I think that's really important looking at who's already doing it because there are people that are already doing it. And, and um, you know, we got to get out of our way and just tr uh, reach out to the resources and people are really, right now, everybody's open. A lot of people are very open to helping that would have never been open to helping because they realize 
there's room for everybody and there's tons of business. I, I've been doing the seven day Tony Robbins thing. There's people all over the world, you know, trying to get coached, you know, a lot of people like everywhere. I mean, from the UK, you name it. Uh, so the, you know, work business clients, there are, there's tons of them. And it's just, we, we got to, you know, really focus out, focus out like Teresa's done. And I think that's been one of the best things that she's done for her business was, was focus out, you know, be of service for others and she's always doing that already. But because she stuck to that model that, that has always gave her abundance, you know, business is coming to her, people are referring to her and things like that. So, uh, it's just, we really got to reach out for support. And I think that's the hardest part sometimes is just reaching out for support and be okay with not knowing everything and know that this has never happened before. So what are you going to create from it? And knowing that you already have a lot of tools in you. You've already rose above a lot of challenges. So how are you going to use those? And what new tools do you need uh, to get ahead? Well, exactly. The Survive and Thrive. I want to, Denise, if you can chime in here. Um, I'm at a loss. I forgot how many employees you have, but I want to talk a little bit about the stress and all that comes along and, and maybe share some insights of how you're dealing, your company's dealing with. Yeah. Out. So um, Logical Innovations, um, we have almost 400 employees now and we're all over the country. So we're based in Texas as our headquarters, but we're actually in Northern and Southern California. We're in Nevada, New Mexico, Louisiana, Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Ohio, and Maryland. So, and, and Washington, DC. So we are really all over the country. And as I said before, one of the really uh, blessings for us is that as a federal contractor, we've been able to continue work. Now, it's, it's a whole new normal for us because we've had to make sure that our folks had all the tools and everything they needed to be able to work from home, to continue to engage with each other, with the customers, be able to make their deliverables on time, and then you know make sure everyone had the right technology and equipment to make it all happen from home. So it's you know it's been um, it's been great. You know we have some wonderful customers that have helped us along the way, and you know so when folks make sure that they had the right equipment, they were able to get that equipment. You know they they were seeing things in advance. And the, the government was actually preparing us having um, tests, uh, different, a series of tests that, you know, before we actually had to shut down to say, okay, we're going to, we're going to do testing of all the systems and telework from home and, and give feedback so that we knew once we were told, okay, you've got to go home where everybody is now on quarantine, that we were prepared. And um, so one of the things we do is, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I, I tell people I'm grounded right now. I, I'm, I'm at a loss because I'm not on a plane, you know, every other week or so like I'm used, used to. But, you know, we've been using the technology, things like Zoom, things like uh, Microsoft Teams to have these face to face kind of discussions and to stay engaged and to make sure people aren't overwhelmed because, you know, we've got people with different life circumstances, some juggling um teaching their kids at home while trying to work an eight hour or nine hour job a day or people who live alone who are dealing with the anxiety of not having someone and being alone. And so, you know, we just have people who are just, you know, in different stages in their life and in their lifestyle. So we've had to make sure that we, we stay in contact, keep the communication going open and make sure that everybody knows that we're in this together. And, you know, and add on top of that, some of the social unrest that's going on, um, you know, and just to make sure that, you know, everybody has a channel um, we, we've really ramped up our employee assistance programs to make sure that we can do, they can have virtual meetings. Um, there's teledoctor visits that we made sure we set up through our benefits programs. Um, so just to make sure we, we look at the whole, the whole person, not just, not just the employee and, and what they're doing, uh, you know, company wise, but, but their lifestyle and make sure that we're there for them and uh, they get the support they need. Um, and, and I tell you what, we just have some amazing people and just, they're just all champions. And um, I, I'm really, I'm really very, very fortunate to, to have this group of people um, to work with and, and to carry, carry our message forward. So. 
Gina Lynn, if you would, and I'll come to you, Avon, for your thoughts. Um, how do you plan? I mean, this is my issue. How do you plan with the unknown? I mean, there are no guarantees. I mean, I, I keep referring back to the Latina conference, but had we had a solid date and a solid condition in which we could hold the conference, we would have done this. So we were backed into doing this as a virtual event. But how do you plan for the unknown? That's a good question. Um, you plan the future, right? That's what we do. And so I guess it's the same. You plan for the future. You put the, now, from now on, you can put pandemic on your radar because it, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. So, but here's the thing. Look at the innovation that was created during the pandemic. I mean, I'm telling you, I'm here in Mexico. I have, the day they shut everything down, all the restaurants in the town that we live in immediately built a WhatsApp group and started saying, hey, we are available to come to your house. We are sterilized. We are like the day that night. They were already delivering to people's homes. So they pivoted fast here. And, and then all of my, I don't even have to go to the, I, I, mean, I don't go to a supermarket anymore anyway, but every single one of my neighbors from around is selling something. Somebody's selling eggs, somebody's selling milk, somebody's selling this. So walk, we literally just have to walk within a block. So I think it's just the will to survive will keep you innovative and, mm -hmm. and, and curiosity. I think sometimes we get stifled by, um, and we get, and I think it's because I've traveled so much and, you know, my husband and I, we sold everything we own in the United States and we both have two suitcases. I have two and he has two. And we rolled out of California that way. And we still have those same two. So our, and basically if we have to evacuate somewhere, we just throw it all in the suitcase and we're out. So I guess that's one way to plan is plan for what you absolutely can't live without. And, um, and you know what, and have money in the bank. One of the things we do not do is save. Number one thing we do not save, and we need to learn to save. And right now, people are, I think, are spending less money. They're not going to Starbucks every day. That's 25 bucks right there a week if you don't go to Starbucks. That's $100 a month. You know, you think about it that way. I'm sorry, Starbucks, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just small okay. little things that we can spawn. do right now. <laughs> it's okay. They're not one of my sponsors. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Um, Sorry. And you're hey, and you're living large if you're spending twenty five dollars a day on coffee, Yvonne. If you would, um, no, five dollars. Oh, five five bucks. Five, five bucks. That's twenty five dollars a week. That's a hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. At an interest rate over X amount of years. Come on. <laughs> Fifty cents a can. I don't know. <laughs> and, and, and plus. <laughs> I make my own food, so you know. There you yeah. go. I, yeah, I, I saw go. <laughs> I see go all over the world. Where when I travel, I see I see them in Spain. I see them in Europe. I see them here, everywhere. God. <laughs> yeah. We, um, Yvonne, talk about how your uh, your planning for the unknown, if you will. You know, in property management, we uh, set aside a certain amount of reserves for the unknown. So we found ourselves in a really good position with our reserves. So each one of our properties had to have at least one month uh, of reserve inside their account. And we really didn't find a shortage. Um, we also um, had already started working with our local plumbers and making sure that all of our properties had um, uh, what are those, the wrenches at the gas meters so that they could turn off the gas meter should any, an emergency occur and we couldn't get out to them. Uh, so we went out and we talked to all of our residents, uh, showed them where the emergency shutoff was for their gas, for their um, water heater as well, um, showed them where the panel was we checked on our elderly, we checked on our single parents to make sure everybody had, you know, what they needed in case we went into the, um, into the shelter in place. Um, so we did that like a day before the shelter in place. And um, I felt very lucky that we had those uh, precautions already set. 
um, we immediately reached out to our, our owners and we started to talk to our owners about what difficult times would lie ahead, that the unknown, the unprecedented, and um, what they should really be doing is considering about the long-term goal and um, avoiding a long-term vacancy. You know, don't, don't try to evict the tenants. Uh, let's work with them. Let's think about what they're going to be going through and get a game plan. And um, we had these conversations early on before the governor put out any kind of precedent. And that really, for me, that made my job so much easier. But what it really boils down to is that we were we were knowledgeable in our practice to know that we had to have certain safe practices in place and we had them in place and I'm so grateful that we did. So it wasn't lucky. It was, you know, we were prepared. Um, we didn't know it would be for a pandemic. No one knew that at all, but um, we certainly were prepared and we did the best for our residents and for our owners alike. Well, good. Um, not good, but... Um, did it lose volume? Uh, his, no, his I, microphone I, is off. I forgot to. Um, um, I had yeah. the moot on. <laughs> you know, sorry. What every woman wishes she had for her husband, her partner, what have you, a moot button. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I, I I wanted to also talk. Um, you know, I, it's we've been on here for about an hour, so I wanted to think about wrapping up, but um, Jenny Marie, some of your thoughts. On pivot? On pivoting. How are you pivoting like, <laughs> with your dog, your dog treats? I know. I a do potential customer treats. in and Mexico right there. Yes, right there. And I ship. I ship. And that's been interesting because shipping is so expensive. You know, I learned a lot about that piece of it and how to how to still get still have my customer if i can't see them face to face like at all the events i i do and um so my website and shipping and and knowing that that's 24 7 i can do that at two o'clock in the morning when i can't sleep after you know watching mom and dad and stuff so um it i, I i've changed a lot i would have to say that pivoting has changed me COVID has made me look at life way differently um, because now I can do almost anything. Um, you know, I can I can chop a fig tree without having help. You know, I can pick up my dad from the floor without somebody else. So there's different things that you find that you learn about yourself. And yeah. um Pivoting is definitely one. I use Instacart. Love Instacart. You know, I had to think of other ways to get what I we needed here in the home. And so my neighbors were, you know, one, the muscle power of stuff I needed done. Um, because I had many things uh, change for me uh, personally during this time with my business as well. So um, we pivot. Flexibility is key, though. I think flexibility, you know, and just perseverance. Just keep pushing, 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 and pushing. So, uh, Sylvia, you, you and I have known each other for a while, while. And we're both in the publishing department. Uh, I stopped printing a magazine several years ago. And... Um, but you continued on. And, and don't get me wrong. There's not a day goes by that I don't miss holding that magazine and smelling the ink on the paper. There, there's just something about that experience. Um, but talk a little bit about um, starting your business and just keeping it going. It's 25 years or you're, 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 are you closer to 30 now? 25, but feels like 40. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we we have been in printing at the same time. You were my my you know pillar at the beginning. I remember calling you and said, "How how do I go the next step?" Because it was starts you know it started with a dream to help Latinos that I used to take care as a counselor in ROP, 
but I never knew what the business was by itself. But at that time, being the first magazine in Orange County, I had so much help without me asking, even people and businesses wishing to have the magazine, Calce Fullerton asking for, you know, 200 copies for their Latino, uh, the Hispanic, you know, teachers uh, giving Chicano studies. Everything evolved so gratefully until, you know, the terrible 2007 that I needed to cut down many, many things that we were doing to continue. But, um, the, you know, I did not mention that we have had our website and Francis included a lot of, you know, platforms in the social media, but still probably because I'm from the old age, I like to touch the magazine to keep it, you know, to highlight. And that is what is making me feel very incomplete. And as everybody is, you know, not knowing what is the future because things are so, uh, so different. No one, no one knows. And that feeling is very, very terrible. <clears throat> but the beginning was beautiful. I had so many, you know, help and people next to me including beautiful pieces of articles and colleges have been my number one, you know, uh, platform to keep on growing. But now God will know when we will breathe again <laughs> and plan with more certainty than what we are, you know, having today. That's it. Rosilena, I'm trying to get you to... Um... Mute. Activate your um, your camera and your the rest of you. She, Rosilene is a uh, I believe a 2014. There you are. What a cool background! Look at you. How are you doing? And we just lost her again. She has the rollers on. Hey, but you got, you got my voice. On? Sorry. Yes, I'm getting ready. <laughs> I'm going from one job to the other. I work at home and then I got to go to the office again. So, so anyways, but I've been listening to you. Go ahead. <laughs> so anyways, hi, Richard. How are you? How's everybody? I'm good. I'm Jennifer. Uh, good. good. A, a room full of uh, Latinas of influence. How cool is I that? I know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you, Richard, hey, for always honoring <laughs> us. Hey, Gina, how yeah. are you? <laughs> nice to see you. Good to see you. Or not to. <laughs> yeah. Did curlers, did she really have curlers on? Yeah. So, what is it she about did. this conference? <laughs> I'm telling you, hey, there's this, some, oh, some hey, component to it. That, yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> hey, you, you don't get the real me till a while. So carry on, carry on. But anyways, Richard, thank you. I just want to do, um, thank you again. I mean, you know, for um, honoring and making a platform for, you know, I mean, I've, some of these women have from the past and the future, but, you know, you always seem to, to get great women that you honored. And I was watching all the videos and um, everybody that you're honoring this year. So I'm really, I'm happy that you continue doing this. And, you know, I'm also passionate and it's about, you know, staying together, working together and, um, just supporting each other along the way. But thank you for what you do every day. Well said. That's what it is. Um, ladies, I, I want to be respectful of the time. So I'm going to, if you will, go around and um, uh, look for some uh, final comments, if you will, and and uh, give somebody an opportunity if they uh, come in towards the end. But um, uh let's start with um let's start with uh sandy lou oh wow so i just want to say first of all thank you once again to to you richard for um giving us this platform and for um shifting and giving us this opportunity because you know we we went we went virtual uh i we got to learn we, we're all shift masters we just don't know it and i think it's really important for us to just own that that we are shift masters we're all leaders and and um we are not our stories and we are not our circumstances and that every obstacle is an opportunity to learn and grow and propel ourselves so 
look for those opportunities. Stop looking back at what was and look at what is and what I have to work with and where do I want to go and get your affairs in order, get your affairs in order. I notice a lot of people struggling, uh, trying to get PP, PPP and, and other things because their their taxes are not in order, their finances are not in, you know, the paperwork is not in order. It doesn't matter if you're negative, positive, whatever, if you got to have all that in order so that you're better prepared as well. Not only is it going to give you peace of mind, but it's going to prepare you. And, and most importantly, always, always take care of you and your relationship with yourself. The people that are struggling the most in home alone are the people that don't have that good relationship with themselves where they can be alone. And so um, if you have these things and you do these things, you will thrive. You will get through this and you will get through it in a powerful way. And remember, you don't have to do it alone. You always have a choice. I love that. And speaking of getting your affairs in order, here, hand me the pony. Whichever. Hi, Nicholas. I know. See, this is Nicholas. Hi, here. Nicholas. <laughs> Everybody was asking about it. He's doing our handling our social media today. But speaking of affairs in order, you might want to talk with Wells Fargo Bank, who has uh, uh, many financial services available to you. How was that? Good segue. Good, Good segue into the uh, thing. Yvonne, your final thoughts, please. Um, I too, I just want to thank you, Richard. I want to also thank the Small Business Development Corporation of Orange County for the nomination. I'm really humbled to be among all of you. Um, you know, we just have to go out there and do our best. And yes, we have to pivot, we have to grow. And um, remember um, that we're all in it together. And uh, I just hope everybody wears a mask. <laughs> That's my two cents. Yeah. And you're right. Um, Michael Ocasio and the group there have just been right phenomenal. Uh, Michael was one of the, um, get this, um, they were one of our last sponsors because we were only, what, Jenny Marie, a couple of weeks away from hosting this event. Right. And he was one of the, and I said, hey, what would you like us to do? And he goes, hey, I'm going to stand by you. And so I can't emphasize enough how how important it was um, and how appreciative uh, we are that uh, our sponsors stood by us. And uh, uh, quite frankly, I think they're going through the same thing and trying to figure things out for themselves, but yeah. Absolutely, okay. absolutely, but thank you. Thank you. Um, who should we go with next? Teresa, if you would, kind of give us your final, final thoughts. Yes, well, just like everyone else, I also wanna, first of all, Thank you, Richard and Hispanic Lifestyle for, for this platform, for bringing us together. And um, it, it really sends a message and, and hopefully for the rest of the people out there to really understand that they're not alone and that we can do this. You know, it's hard. It's not easy. Um, change overall is not easy, but it's good. It's good. Um, I just, my final thoughts would be to everybody just, I always have a saying of saying, just keep swimming. Just mm -hmm. keep swimming. You, you will get there and uh, just, you know, um, don't resist change. Actually open up, open up your hearts, open up your doors and see what's behind that change because it could be the best. I feel better than when we started the pandemic. And I think that's what um, we should all be in a position like that. We cannot go back to normal because normal was not working for a lot of people, regardless if you realized it or not. It was kind of working for me, but I didn't realize it was not really working. Um, so you have to be open up to change, open up your hearts and like what we just did, we open up our doors wider, bigger, um, and we're gonna keep doing that as much as we can, open up our hearts and just help each other. Um, we get there faster and, um, and better and bigger together. And um, anybody out there, I am, I'm here. I'm always the person you can call, talk to. Everybody's like, but how do you do that? You're so busy. Well, yes, I'm busy, but I'm always very um, 
conscious of other people that also need to help or other restaurants that need, um, or even just let's talk about what you're doing and where you are. Um, you know, I, I think out of all this, we should not like what Richard has not only just survive, but we can thrive and right. together we can do that. So I thank like you. That. Yeah. That's, um, which is a good segue into my next event. We, we've actually recognized your company as a business that has survived and yeah. thrived. And now you individually as a Latina of influence. So, um, yes. Two, two more, Gina, Gina Lynn, and then I'll uh, go to you, Sylvia, for final comments. Well, I, I'm just, because that's in my head, but Teresa in her seg was um, that we, our values be our business. And I just, that has really stuck me today. And um, I didn't, I guess I didn't realize I always have done that. But to see her put it so succinctly, it was like, wow, it was like really dragging into me. Aww. So I think people... Yeah. Um, so uh, congratulations on, on your award. And I want to congratulate every single 2020 award recipient. Who knew, I said in January to someone, I said, this is 2020. We're in 2020 vision. Who knew? Who, who knew what, Gina Lynn? Are we going to have to wait for that? <laughs> she froze. She froze. She's all the way in Mexico, so we have to wait until it comes. I, 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 that <laughs> that signal's got to jump over the wall and then get here. So, I'm... where is she in Mexico? Uh, she said she was in the northern part of Mexico. The which... small town. Right, yeah. Sylvia, if you don't mind, uh, jump right on in there and uh, give us some of your. I want you to give us an uplifting thought, Sylvia. Good. You're always guiding me to the right side. Thank you, <laughs> Richard. Well, I think that I am grateful for this stop that the pandemic gave to all of us because I believe I was running all the time, not thinking, not even feeling. I was just going who knows where. So that, that to me was a very good stop and to realize that I like being at home, you know, cooking, making bread, having my family enjoying and connecting with my clients, you know, and listening to their stories and mm -hmm. trying, you know, to be there for them, at least listening and doing the best we could uh, through our website and online <clears throat> uh, platforms we have. But it was very positive for, to me and to my family and to my people because we had the time, the chance to think and to improve many things that we didn't have the chance to, to know that we were going the wrong way. So, and, and I thank you, Richard, to have so many wonderful ladies here. You give us a new breath, a new hope, a new desire of keeping on going so i i appreciate what you do well, thank you thank you very much um and jenny marie and then i'll i'll make kind of a final comment well thank you everyone you guys are fabulous and congratulations again to all the 2020 recipients um amazing women and always are all of you are amazing so thank you richard for just perseverance and making this work and happen and and pushing through and your your guys your family your sons everyone that was behind the scenes nicholas. for you and nicholas nicholas we miss you so um i just i think my final words would be is just be open to flexibility because it changes very quickly yep and it, i mean it is like that i like that it changes very quickly and and be resourceful you know i think the thing is is don't be afraid of trying something that you've not done before and ask for help if you don't know how to do it um that's that's i think reaching out reaching out don't stay even though you got to be confined don't stay confined step out well a couple of Thank you, Jenny Marie. A, a couple of things that I, I, 
I've told some people individually, and I think I have shared it at our, our women's event that we usually do in November, is that I was raised by a single parent, my mother. I have um, two uh, other sisters. Uh, today would have been Virginia's uh, birthday. I'm not going to tell you how old she would have been, but uh, so we miss her dearly. And um, I, I've always felt that producing conferences like this would have benefited my mother in some way. And I, and I talk and debate with my sisters uh, about whether or not um, she would have attended a conference like this. But more importantly, the information's out there and you guys inspire me. Um, I enjoy these stories. Um, my wife says I'm a Medici. I just, I just love the stories. Um, and they are very inspiring. Um, but uh, as soon as I find out what that word is. Um, uh, Don't look. I like that. My offer and to everyone else, this has been a, I, I'm, I'm sure that there was a blueprint to do this, um, but it wasn't a booklet. I had to pull information from several sources and thank goodness for my son and my son, Ryan, who uh, uh, were smiling because uh, Jenny Marie heard me yelling at him five minutes before. That's just the way my family talks. I don't know how your family talks, but we always raise our voice and we point and we do this. But at the end of the day, I love my children. And, and, yeah. uh, and I could not do any of this without the support of my wife. I know that for sure. Um, Gabby, Gabby, who is watching this, by the way, but um, she does. She inspires me. I mean, last night, sometimes, like, what am I doing? Seriously, (laughs) Sylvia, I'm telling you right now. I don't know how many times I thought, "What are you doing? You know, what are you doing? Is anybody going to watch? Is anybody going to?" I could tell you, our registrations were more. People are still registering online, and I'm not trying to fi- I'm trying to figure that component out. But they're still registering this moment. I just saw an email come by. The information is going to be online. The videos are online now, so you can watch them at your leisure. But uh, we've had more more people watching this. We had at least as many people register for the event as if we were doing this. In person. in person so wow. here is some hope wow of, of moving forward and trying to figure figure things out because i'm just being honest with myself and i'm being honest with you i don't know the next time that we're going to be able to do a conference uh like like our latina conference so in person in person so yeah. mm-hmm. right I, thank right. you yeah so in one way or another, there'll be a 2021 Latina conference <laughs> and a set of Latina, a new set of Latinas of influence. So follow us on uh, hispaniclifestyle.com and send your notes and um, the list just keeps on going. I mean, we, we don't have the same names every year. There's 31 new names. So I, I believe we're up to 260 something. Yeah. Right now. Maybe next time it'll be global. Yeah. I think yeah. it will be. You know, this year yeah. we had, uh, if, if, in the videos, we had somebody from uh, Florida. We had somebody from New Jersey, Chicago, a couple of people from the Midwest, and of course, up and down the state of California, but many more from Mexico. Orange County. What's up with uh, Orange Mexico. County? Mexico. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Mexico. So, Mexico. Mexico. I think Gina's back. I'm, I got knocked off. We're getting ready to have a storm that's thundering and lightning, and I don't know what's going to happen. So I got knocked off, but I'm back. <laughs> well, well, ladies, I was telling everybody that we should wrap this up now. It's 320. Um, I think I'm going to have one of, what are those? Survival. I'm going to go have a survival <laughs> margarita prepared by Chef yeah. Rosie. Yeah, that looks pretty good. <laughs> All right, ladies. Any anything else? Anything uh, missing? Go. Can we go eat at Cambalache now? Yes, it's uh, open. Okay, so we can go eat there. I can go get a finger printed visit. at Yvonne's. I need some life. Yeah. Ca- After this experience, I really need some life uh, coaching and transitioners. <laughs> I'll tell you. And I'm looking forward yeah. to reading the next edition of Para Todos magazine. And Wonderful. Then I will share with my dog some doggy treats. How's that? Did I plug everybody? Did I get everybody included? Oh, 
Yeah. So. My show, I will, I will be resuming my show, Transform Your Life with Sandy Lou and Friends at Sandy Lou um, at Life's Choice Coaching on um, July 22nd. Uh, my first guests are phenomenal mother and son. They went back to college and just got accepted to Berkeley. Wow. Oh. Sorry. Berkeley, Berkeley. Awesome. I, I love it. Hey, um, so I'm a glutton for punishment. My next project is in a couple of weeks. Uh, those of you who remember the TV, yeah, I don't think Jenny Marie knows this, but uh, those of you who are familiar with, with the TV show, I wonder if I can do this, um, with the TV uh -huh. show, Resurrection Boulevard. Wow. I'm oh, that's a, good. I'm, I'm going to put a graphic up there right now. Uh-huh. Oh. So. Awesome. Look too. <sighs> okay, I'm Thanks. exhausted. I'm I'm leaving. Anybody else have any plugs and one more any plugs? No? No. Thank you, Good. ladies. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Thank and, you. Uh, we'll, we, we look forward to connecting with you soon. Thank you. Bye. 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 Have a Bye. blessed day.